Okay, good morning and welcome. It's great to see you here today. Uh, if it's your first time with us, then welcome to you. Uh, and, and it's really good to have you uh, joining us this week. Uh, we hope uh, that the first week at school went well. Did it go well for you? Who enjoyed their first week back at school? Yeah, a few of you, a few of you are a little bit too young to go back to school, aren't you? Okay, but hopefully you enjoyed seeing your teachers and your friends. Um, my name's Gary. I'm one of the pastors here, and this is Annie. She's our youth worker here at the church, and we're going to be leading our time together uh, today. Uh, just a few house uh, rules. Uh, while we're in the building, while we're in this room, if you can just remain around your table uh, for as much as possible. If you do need to go to the toilet, then that can be found at the bottom of the, uh, the stairs. Also, if there is a, a fire alarm, we shouldn't have a fire alarm, but if there is a fire alarm, then there are two fire escapes, two ways to go, either down the back staircase or the staircase you came up, um, and there's a door at the bottom of this back staircase. Equally, there's a door at the bottom to go out, head outside, and we'll just meet over by the graffiti wall, okay? But like I say, don't expect a fire alarm to go off, but just in case. It does, and don't use the lift in, in those circumstances. And if you have any difficulty get down the stairs, uh, then we will assist you out of the building, okay? Okay, well, we're going to enjoy our time together this morning, but first of all, we're going to start with a word of prayer, shall we? Let's just pray. Father, uh, we thank you and praise you for a new day. We thank you that the sun is shining outside. We thank you that we can come along and join together in this way, uh, that we can learn more about you and what you have to say to us in your word today. Lord, help us to have fun, uh, we ask, and help us to learn lots. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, today is a very special day. Does anybody know what is special about today? Joshua, do you know? <laughs> what do you think, Joshua? It's Mother's Day. You're exactly right. It's Mother's Day today. So we're going to start with a little bit of a quiz. It's going to come up on the screen. And we wondered if you can match up or guess what the children of these various animals are called. Okay, you ready? Let's see the first question. So what do you call a baby dog? Look how cute that baby dog is. Mm. Is it called a foal? Is it called a kid? Or is it called a pup or a puppy? Which one is it called? A puppy. That's exactly right. Well done. A baby dog is called a puppy. Let's have a look at the next one. Well done. There you go. What do you call... Oh, this is maybe a bit trickier. What do you call a baby owl? Is it called mm. an owlet? An owling, or is it called a chick? Owlet. I heard owlet. Let's see if that's right. Yes, well done if you said owlet. Well done. Next question. What do you call a baby rabbit? Is a baby rabbit a cub or a bunny or a kitten? What do you reckon? Mm. Esther, you know. Is it a kitten, did you say? Let's have a look. Yes, Kitten. Esther, oh, well right. done, great knowledge. Okay, there might be another question. What do you call a baby kangaroo? Is his name Jason? Is his name Joey? Or is his name Jonathan? Hmm. What do you think? What do you reckon? Has anyone got an idea? A Joey, a, what do you say? A Joey, let's see if you're right. A Joey, his name is a Joey, not a Jason or a Jonathan. Have we got any more? Oh, what do you call a baby goat? Is it called a child? Is it called a toddler? Or is it called a kid? You reckon kid, Timothy? Let's see. Let's see if you're right. Oh, you guys are so knowledgeable about baby animals. That's right. It's called a kid. Is there another one? What do you call a baby puffin? A baby puffin? Is it called a puffling? A pufflet? Or a puffle. <laughs> All of those are funny names, aren't they? Does anyone have any ideas for that one? Tricky one. Isaac thinks a puffling. Let's see if you're right, Isaac. You are Whee! right. It's a puffling. Well Good job, Isaac. Well done. Fantastic stuff. Well, well done, everyone. Well, as we were saying at the start, today is a, a special day, isn't it? And that reminds me of a story that I once heard of a teacher who was talking to her class one day and she was teaching them all about magnets, okay? Now, does everyone know what a magnet is? If you don't, it's going to come up on the screen. This is what a magnet looks like. It's not the, uh, it's not the store. It's one of these, okay? 
should come up on the screen in a moment. Anyway, this particular teacher, she wanted uh, the children in her class to guess what this object was called without showing them the picture, just by describing it uh, to them. And so she said, uh, my full name has six letters. The first one is M. I pick things up. What am I? Okay, so imagine her surprise. I mean, that's fairly easy, isn't it? Especially when you've got the picture there as well. But imagine her surprise when half of the children in the class said, Mother. Mother. Oh. Well, today, we do uh, give thanks for mothers, don't we, to God? Not just because uh, they are like magnets and they come along and they pick things up off the floor, whether it be the toys that we've left there or maybe our clothes or whatever it might be, but because they love and they care for us. Yeah, did you know that Mother's Day actually started over 400 years ago? It's been around for ages in the UK because people had a great idea that wherever you lived, whatever your job was, on one Sunday in the year, you could take the day off and go and visit your mum. Then you could go and say thank you to your mum and tell her how special she is and how much she loves you and you love her. Well, what a great idea. And then someone else came up with a name for it, a very original name. It was going to be called Mothering Sunday. And we might call it Mother's Day now, which, as Gary said, is what we are celebrating today. Today is the day when we say thank you to, and uh, we say how much we love those in our lives who are like a mum. So it might be your actual mum, it might be a stepmom, it might be a grandma or an auntie or a friend. We are thinking about all those people who are like mums to us. So why don't you turn, if you've got a mum or somebody on your table, and why don't you tell them either thank you or I love you or something quickly now. Good stuff. Okay, so that's what we're going to be thinking about today and celebrating. It's our special uh, Mother's Day family service. But before we do that, we're going to sing. Okay, we're going to sing our first song, Come People of the Risen King. So you'll need your instruments, uh, which you should find on your tables. Okay, everyone should have an instrument. If not, put up your hand and we'll deliver one to you. All right, so let's sing this song. You might just want to tune them first of all. Just make sure they work okay. And then we'll stand together and sing. Let's stand together, shall we? Sing to the morning star of grace From the shifting shadows of the earth We will lift our eyes to Him Where steady arms of mercy reach To gather children in Rejoice, rejoice Struggling in the fight For his perfect love will never change And his mercies never cease But follow us through all our days With a certain hope of peace Rejoice! Church of Christ rejoice 
Well done. Pop your instruments under your chairs, and we'll sing again and play them later on. Now, now of course, lots and lots of people, they tell us uh, they love us, don't they? And we might even say that we love them back. But mums, they are really, really special because they show us uh, they love us. They don't just talk about love, do they? They don't just explain lo- what love is to us. They actually show us uh, love through their actions. So let's have a think about that for a moment. Here's a question for you to think about. How do mums or grandmas or anyone else who's like a mum show their love for us? Have a think and either write it or draw it on your piece of paper. And in a few moments, Gary's going to come around and ask you for some ideas. How do your mums in your life show you that they love you? How do your mum show you that they love you? That's the question. I'm going to come around with a mic in a moment, and Annie's going to draw some pictures, some of your ideas, up on the board. So, what do we reckon? Let's have a go. Let's have... Anyone got an idea? How do mum show they love you? Yep. It's two over here. They hug you. They hug hug you. you. Okay. Annie's got to try and draw this. I'm going to just draw some stick, people. All right, okay. Here's a child. They're kind of hugging each other. That's Okay, hugging. there we go. Okay, hugging. They make food. Oh, they, they make, make food, food good one. for you. Okay, I'm good draw stuff. An oven, kind of. Anything over here? How does your mum show you that she loves you? She cooks, okay? She cooks, I'm Fantastic. Draw a frying pan. Anybody else? What do we reckon? Anything over here? She works. She works. She works. Good yep. one. Goes to work. And daddy works too. Yeah. <laughs> what do we reckon? Hugs. Hugs. Another one. Okay. Cool. One. Oh, come on. Let's get, let's get Annie drawing lots and lots of pictures. <laughs> Don't make me draw any hard things. Hugs, Hugs as well. Thank you, Isaac. Oh. <laughs> Getting away with this one, Annie. What do you reckon? Hugs as well. There's lots of hugs going on. Anything else? She washes your clothes. Okay. Very good. Okay, at the end here, we'll just let Annie draw that. What's Annie going to come up with? There's a t-shirt. Some clothes, a t-shirt. They cook all day long. They cook all day long when you're at school. <laughs> That's right, they just don't stop cooking and cooking and cooking. They care about us. Okay. How do you draw that? How I'm do you draw heart. care? Oh, that's, that's, a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. What do you reckon? What? They listen to us. Oh, dear. An I'm ear? Draw an, an ear? ear? Oh, an ear. Very good. What do we reckon here? Mom, cuddle me. Cuddle me. Cuddle me? Yep. Is that? There's loads for this one. There is. Anything from Esther? Get up in the middle of the night, the of the night Esther. Ooh, she I'm makes her mum get up in the middle of the night. Anything down the front here? Yeah. Plays with us. Mm, Some what, ball, a ball game or something like that? A ball that, game. There we go. Ball. Good one. Helping you out here. And then, I think everybody's been, but Peter... She gives us hugs Good as one. well. Loads Good and one. loads of hugs. Fantastic stuff. Well done. Okay, so there's so many things, but especially hugs and cuddles that our mums do for us and all sorts of reasons that we have to say thank you to them. So we're celebrating mums today because they show us uh, their love for us in very unique and amazing ways in all those different ways that we've just heard and talked about. I mean, who else would be willing to clean up the mess that we make, perhaps um, uh, tidy away our toys or make our tea? Mums do that kind of stuff that nobody else would choose to do because they love us so much. And mums show us their love in very 
very real and practical ways, as we've heard. So you might have spotted on your tables, you might have a little plant pot. And <clears throat> we're going to do a little craft now. You should also have an envelope. Can you hold up if you've got an envelope on your tables? Well done. That envelope is full of lots of lovely stickers, okay? So have a go in a second at decorating those plant pots. Now, one of these, because you should have one for each child on your table, one of them is to give to your mummy. And have a think about if you want to give the other one, if you've got another one, to somebody else, whether it's a grandma or an auntie or a friend, you might want to give that one to somebody else to say Happy Mother's Day. So have about five minutes to decorate those with all lots of lovely stickers. Okay. Do you want to hold up what your plants are looking like? So we can see the lovely stickers. Wow, Isaac, that's brilliant. Oh, Joshua, that is so beautiful. Well done. Back row, you've got some lovely ones. Well done, very sparkly. Oh, look at that heart. That is lovely over there. Well done. These are all, look well done, Daniel. Well done on this table. They look beautiful. Oh, Eden, yours is so sparkly. These look beautiful. Well done. So as I said, you can choose if you want to give them to your mummies or if you want to give them to somebody else as well. You can take all of those home and choose who you want to give those to. So we're going to stand and sing another song. It's called God is Bigger. So grab your instruments. Let's stand up and have a go to this song. Sometimes life can get us down Things that happen make us frown Slip on a banana skin Trip and fall into a bin Sometimes we just wonder why Things that happen make us cry We get ill or hurt ourselves But we can always tell each other We can always tell each other God is bigger God is strong Sometimes people make us sad Wind us up and make us mad Call us names or pull our hair Laugh about our underwear Sometimes we feel on our own Things that happen make us grow Nothing seems to go our way But we can always tell each other We can always tell each other everyone. Gary, oh. what are you doing? Well, oh dear. I thought, you know, today is Mother's Day, so I'd make an effort and dress up as a hen. A hen? You look yep. like a chicken, not a hen. A, a chicken. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Annie, because under my wing here, I have some chicken jokes. Oh, okay? no. Are you ready to hear some chicken jokes, everyone? Yeah. Yep, okay. Did you hear about the chicken who only laid eggs in winter? She was no spring chicken. Oh. Okay, here's another one, here's another one. What day do chickens hate most? Any ideas? 
Don't know. Choice of seven, Fridays. Fry, Friday. Okay, <laughs> here comes another one. They get better, I think. How do chickens bake a cake? They start from scratch. All right, and here's, here's a final <laughs> one, okay. Why did the chicken cross the road twice? Because he was a double crosser. Oh. He was a double crosser. Anyone got any chicken jokes that they can think of? Anybody? No, just me today. You've used up all of them, Gary. Oh okay, let's forget the bad chicken jokes, Gary. I shouldn't have mentioned it. More to the point, why are you dressed up like a hen? What has that got to do with Mother's Day? Well, you see, I, I was reading through my Bible, and I found this verse in the Bible, and it talks all about a mother hen, okay? In Luke chapter 13, it's going to appear on the, the screen for us. In that verse, it says this, okay? It says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Many times I have wanted to help your people. I wanted to gather them together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you did not let me. Well, that's a good verse, but what does it mean? Kids, can you see, if we leave that verse on the screen, what is the animal that Jesus is talking about here? Can you spot, Gary is a big clue, what animal is Jesus talking about? Can you see in the verse, Timothy? A hen. He's talking about a hen. Well and what or who is the hen gathering under her wings? Can you see? Who is she gathering under her wings? We might have a clue on the stage. I can hear it. Chicks. Yes, exactly. Well done. well done. A hen is a great picture of a mother's love, isn't it? Because she wants to love and protect and care for all of her tiny baby little chicks, just like our mums might put their arms around us to protect us from harm. So a mother hen puts its wings around its baby chicks to keep them safe. Well, you might be wondering, safe from what? Can you think of any animals that a mother hen might need to keep her baby chicks safe from? Mm. Esther, what did you say? Foxes, that's a great one. Can you think of any others? A nest. A nest. They might want to protect their nest, do you mean? Yeah, exactly. They need to protect their nest. Can you think of any other animals? Well... We've got a mother hen over here, like Gary. Let's see how a mother hen might react if a snake, I've got a snake here, if a snake comes slithering along. Are you ready? Let's see how Gary's going to react, mother hen. Okay. Well, I don't think I, he would just sit there and read his newspaper. I'm not sure that that's the right thing to do. That's not protecting your chicks, Gary, okay? Our Bible verse tells us that the mother hen would jump into action and gather her chicks Woo! under her wing and protect them. So the hen would do that to protect, it, protect its chicks from all sorts of danger. Should we try some other ones and see if the mother hen knows how to react? So I have got, Esther said this, I've got a fox. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> oh, oh, goodness me. Okay, I've got a bear, a big scary bear. Oh, oh dear. Oh, these are flying all over. A tiger, a tiger. Oh, wow, oh, wow. Okay, what about this great big dog? Ready? Oh, dear. Okay, Anna, oh, a dinosaur. A dinosaur? A dinosaur. What are you going to do, Mother Hen? Ah! Oh, wow. Okay, so the hen rushed to protect her chicks, her lovely little chicks, because that is the love of a mother who wants to keep her chicks safe. Yes, that's right. And that is how a hen would protect her chicks, isn't it? A hen would uh, bash those uh, enemies away and gather her chicks under her wing and make sure they are really, really safe. But what about your mums? I wonder... When has your mum ever tried to keep you safe? In what kind of situations? For instance, what would your mum do in these different situations? Okay, they're going to come up on the screen. How would your mum help you in this situation? Two children about to cross a road. What do you reckon? Put up your hand if you know the answer. Well, what, how would your mum help you in that situation, do you reckon? Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Okay, yep, yeah, your mum would come along and help you across the road. She wouldn't let you cross it on your own, would she? Okay, what about this one? Oh, Ooh, that little boy has fallen over and hurt his knee. What would your mum do in that situation? What do we reckon? Someone put up their hands if you, if you know what you do in that situation. 
What do we reckon? Yep. Put a plaster on it, wouldn't they? Yep. Good Mums work. would put a plaster on it. What about this next one? Oh. Oh no. That little boy is about to touch the oven. It's going to be very, very hot, isn't it? What would your mum do in that situation? Have you ever had that happen in your house? Yes? She'd pull your arm away, wouldn't she? And wouldn't let you touch something that's hot. Okay, what about this last and next one? There's a boy. He's gone to school. The kids are making fun of him. And the boy comes home from school in tears. What would the mum do there, do you reckon? She'd probably give him a cuddle, as we were talking about earlier. Give him a hug and some words of comfort, wouldn't she? You see, there are lots and lots of different dangers in life, aren't there? And mums, they, they come alongside us and they protect us from them. And they do so because they love us and they care for us, just as a hen cares for its chicks. Well, let's have another look at that verse. Um, so let's have a look at this. Our verse isn't just talking about a mother hen protecting her chicks or a mum even protecting her children. It's got a much deeper meaning than that. It's actually talking about God wanting to protect his people, those people that he created and he made. So let's have a look at that verse again. And especially at the end, it says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, many times I wanted to help your people. I wanted to gather them together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings but you did not let me yes in that verse Jesus is he's really really quite sad because uh, people have been treating uh, his messengers in a, in a horrible way these messengers they were called prophets and these prophets they had come along and they had urged the people who had turned away from God and rejected him they urged the people to turn back to him but the people, as we see in the last part of that verse, uh, they just wouldn't listen. Uh, they kept on ignoring God. They got rid of those messengers uh, that God sent them, and they carried on living life their own way. But Jesus, he knew that by ignoring God and rebelling against him and leaving out him out of their lives, they were in real danger. They were in real danger, as we heard last week, of spending eternity without God. And yet Jesus, he loved the people of Jerusalem so much that he wanted to gather them together and protect them, just like a hen protects her chicks or a mother protects her children. But sadly, as Annie said, the people just wouldn't listen. I wonder, have you ever chosen not to listen to your mum? Has anyone chosen not to listen to their mums before? I know I definitely have. I'm sure we all have. Even though our mums know best, can you think of a time when you haven't listened to your mums? Can anyone think of a time when they haven't listened? Well, here's a few examples. You might be able to think that you've done these. Maybe your mum has said, it's time to come for tea. Tea is on the table. Come and have tea now. Because she knows you're really hungry and it's time for dinner. But maybe you ignored her and carried on playing. Has anyone ever done that before? Yep. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I have. I have. Or maybe she said, come and have a nice bath because you've been playing outside all day and you're pretty smelly and you're pretty sweaty and she wants you to be nice and clean. But you ignored her and you carried on playing outside instead. Has anyone ever done that? Yeah. Yeah, I've done yeah that. definitely. Or maybe here is a classic one. Maybe it's bedtime. And your mum tucks you in and she's saying goodnight because she knows that you're tired and it's time for you to go to bed. But you decide it's not late enough and you stay up a little bit longer. Maybe you play with your toys. Maybe you just don't go to sleep. Who has ever done that? Yes. Mm. Well, I think we've all been guilty of some of those things. And sometimes we can treat God like that too, just like those people that Jesus was talking to. We can ignore him and choose not to listen to him, even though, like our mums and a mother hen, he loves and cares and wants to protect us, and he always knows what's best for us. Yeah, exactly like our mums, God knows what's ultimately best for us. And yet we can be so stubborn, can't we? Um, Imagine, okay, imagine this is a farmyard out here. Yeah, I'm a hen, okay, I'm a hen out in the farmyard. And, 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 and suddenly a fox comes into the farmyard, okay? Oh uh, it creeps up 
Well, a hen, knowing what's best for our, her chicks, as we saw earlier, would kind of gather them in her arms, wouldn't she, under her wings. But what if one of those chicks, that it's chick like over there, that naughty chick over there, decided that it didn't want to come running to its mum? Uh-oh. What would happen to that chick when the fox came along? Disaster. That chick is in mortal danger. And sometimes it's a bit like us, isn't it? When we come to God, we can be so stubborn sometimes listening to him. He wants to help us and protect us and save us from danger, from spending eternity without him. And yet the amazing thing is he has done everything we need uh, in sending Jesus to, to forgive and save us. And yet often we just don't listen to him. We don't want to uh, pay any attention to his warnings. Well... As we think about those things, we have a very, so a very fun song and a song that fits very well with what we've just been talking about. And it's called The Chucky and Her Chickies. Ooh. And there are some actions in the chorus that involve pretending to be a chicken. Okay? So let's stand up and join in with the actions. Gary's going to fit in very well with this video. So stand up, play your instruments, and join in with the actions. <laughs> I love my little farmhouse, there's a horsey in the paddock, new cows by the fences, and a rabbit in the hutch. But look at all those chickies, a cuddling to their mummy. That mummy chicky loves her little chickies very much, two, three. God loves his children like the chucky loves her chickies. The mother hen will gather them underneath her wing. God loves his children like the chucky loves her chickies. The mother hen will gather them underneath her wing. And she goes, <laughs> I love that little chicken. In the barn I keep my tractor, on the pond there's often duckies. I whistle to me puppy, oh just watch my puppy run. And I see the little chickies, when they think there might be danger. Mother chicky cluckies, and her wee chickies come to three. And God loves his children like the chucky loves her chickies. The mother hen will gather them underneath her wing. God loves his children like the chucky loves her chickies. The mother hen will gather them underneath her wing. And she goes, <laughs> So when you're sad or oh, sorry, when you're scared, when you worry, I suggest you hurry to the shelter of God's wing. Two, one, two, buckle the shoe. God loves his children like the chucky loves her chickies. The mother hen will gather them underneath her wing. God loves his children like the chucky loves her chickies. The mother hen will gather them underneath her wing. And she goes, <laughs> In this suit. Have a sit down. Okay, well, we're going to have a go at making a craft now. The instructions should come up on the screen. But you are going to make a lovely chicken that looks a little bit like this. Okay? So, um, in your craft packs, you should have your paper plates. You should have some yellow and red card. There you go. Looks like this. You should have... Um, some of the lyrics from the song that says, God loves his children like the chicky loves her chickies, the mother hen will gather them underneath her wing. And you should also have some lovely chicken stickers to stick onto the paper plate. Okay, so follow those instructions. Give you about five, six, seven minutes to have a go at that. Off you go. Wow. Well done, Isaac and Samuel. Yeah. Well done. They're looking like me this morning. Well done. Yeah, <laughs> very good, very good. Oh, well done, that is lovely. Well Beautiful. done, Peter. Good work. Well done. 
We're going to sing, well done, Esther. We're going to sing our last song, which has some actions. You can follow on the screen, well done, Joshua. That's great. If you haven't finished your craft, you can continue with that right now, or you can stand up. mothers today. We also give thanks for the love that points us to the love of Jesus, who, just like a mother hen, longs to gather us to safety because Jesus loves us so much. But what will we do with that love today? Will we receive it and follow it and obey it as he calls us to him, or will we choose to carry on as we are? But following God and living under his wings is the very best place for us. So let's pray together, let's pray. Our Father, we praise you for your amazing love towards us. Thank you that you have invented mothers and given us each a mum. Uh, Lord, help us to see how much our mums care for us and to uh, thank them today if we're able to. Uh, Lord, thank you that our mothers help us to understand a little bit of of your love uh, for us. Lord, thank you that you love and care for us perfectly, and we thank you uh, that Jesus has made it possible for us to know you forever and ever and ever. Amen.